All right, so now we're in Act 3 of The Graduate, and this is going to cover the last four stages because I need to go back and talk about the reward. In Act 3, you see a hero who is more confident. The crisis is marked by the moment of the first time the hero really gets to test what he or she has learned and he or she will either succeed or fail. <laughs> so many times you've probably noticed the crisis moment in a movie where uh, the villain shows up and the hero and the villain have this big fight and either the villain's almost killed but somehow magically gets away or the hero's almost killed but somehow magically gets away. And this is a good moment of the crisis. It's the end of the second act. And both of them will be back later in the third act for the climax for the big showdown. So the crisis is the first time the hero gets to test their abilities. Benjamin, in some respects, and like I said in the end of Act 2, you could debate this, has somewhat of a successful crisis um, that he faces off with Mrs. Robinson. She's left cowering in the corner. And for his trouble... Benjamin gets knowledge, and he gets a chance to test that part of him that's seeking control and wants to assert himself and wants to stand up for himself. S Act 3 starts with the song Scarborough Fair, which has that memorable chorus of She Was Once a True Love of Mine. So from the beginning of Act 3, I know where Benjamin's head is at. He knows now what he wants, and he knows what purpose he has. And that purpose is about Elaine because she was once a true love of his. In the ordeal, the one way you can almost always spot the ordeal is there's a death. Not always a literal death. Sometimes it's an actual death. Um, but most of the times it's a symbolic death. Uh, for Luke, the death is actually the, the um, death of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And that's marked by, that's the ordeal moment. In a romantic movie, the death is the the couple breaks up. Have you ever noticed that? The, the end of the second act, the couple's going to break up. That's the ordeal. That's the moment of crisis. Then they're going to go off and do their own things, and then the climax comes where they confront each other and get back together. The reason they have this is because Vogler says, a hero must die so that they can be reborn. Heroes don't just visit death and come home. They return changed. Benjamin at the beginning of the third act is change. Although he's still kind of moping around a little bit, he now knows what he wants. He wants Elaine, and he's got to figure out how to get her. So he's had his first chance to assert himself, and it went somewhat well. So now he's got to pursue that more. So here's his reward. His reward is Elaine. He finds out that that's what he wants. That's what he wants for his life. And now he's just got to figure out how to get her. Uh, of course, Benjamin has this really funny moment where he goes to his father and says he's going to marry Mrs. Elaine Robbins. I miss, miss, sorry, he's going to marry Elaine. And his family's so happy. And of course, his mom says what moms are going to do, which is, well, we should invite them over. And then Benjamin says, well, Elaine doesn't know it yet. I haven't asked her. So, for Benjamin, the road back is he has this new knowledge that he wants Elaine, so his quest now has to be that he's got to get her. He's got to actually, like, get Elaine to forgive him for what Benjamin did for the affair that Benjamin had with Mrs. Robinson, and she's got to accept him. Again, the hero faces obstacles. Elaine actually has a fiancé or a boyfriend who is... Benjamin's exact opposite. He's tall, Benjamin's short. Uh, Fred is blonde, blue-eyed. Um, Benjamin is brown-haired, brown eyes. Um, Fred, I think his name is Fred. Hopefully I have that right. Uh, Fred is has a purpose. He actually has money. He's part of a fraternity. He's established. He has friends. He's popular. He's going to have a good job. He's going to Berkeley. Uh, <laughs> Benjamin doesn't have any of that. So this is his first obstacle. He's got to overcome the boyfriend. Uh, he's got to overcome Elaine's father, who shows up on this rainy night um, and sets himself as another kind of what's called a threshold guardian, which is something that's meant to impede the hero and test whether or not the hero wants to keep going. Uh, the 
Mr. Robinson shows up and kind of threatens Benjamin. But if you notice, he's kind of also a little weak. Like, he tries to look strong and in control, but there's times that he also seems kind of uncertain that, like, Benjamin might hurt him. So it's a weird dynamic between them of these two men who are having this confrontation that's not, <laughs> seems to be a full-on confrontation. And, of course... There's Mrs. Robinson, because all villains return. No shadow is completely defeated at the end of Act 2. They have to be fully addressed, either be through a henchman or a resurrection or something. So Mrs. Robinson isn't completely vanquished. She's there, still there, and she's still a force. And she pulls quite a few strings, because Benjamin finally actually succeeds. Um, Elaine agrees to marry him and you get the sense of she too is in love with Benjamin and wants to be with Benjamin and so he's actually even talked her into like getting the health test so that they could get married but then she disappears Elaine disappears and Mrs. Robinson's been at work they've got together a shotgun wedding um, Benjamin goes to confront Mrs. Robinson in her house and this is kind of a cool moment to me because it's the first time we see Mrs. Robinson's own room it initially starts in Elaine's room where the seduction started and then she goes into her room and there's all these like cracked mirrors and it looks sharp and it looks cold and she asserts herself again as a powerful shadow and a villain because she calls the police she won't tell Benjamin where Elaine's at and she kind of shows Benjamin that she's still very much in charge of Elaine so Benjamin through uh, craft and a lot of driving <laughs> is able to of course find Elaine and he gets to the church and this is the moment of the resurrection, which is also the climax. And the climax is the big showdown. This is the time where it all is going to definitely come to a head. The hero's got to get together everything that he's learned and show that he or she has completed their quest by com fully vanquishing the shadow or the threat and becoming whole. One of the most important details about this ending is... Benjamin shows up too late. He's, the priest has now pronounced them man and wife, uh, and that's the moment where Benjamin starts saying no, and he starts pounding on the glass, and they turn back. There's a lot of great shots at this moment where Elaine looks up at Benjamin, and she you see Mrs. Robinson muttering, and then you see Mr. Robinson muttering, and then you... Elaine turns her head and she looks over and her fiancé is looking straight at the camera, meaning he's looking straight at Elaine, almost like yelling at her. And for Elaine, you get the sense of like, this is a big moment for her. If she chooses Benjamin, she's rejecting the status quo, so to speak, and that stable life that you get a sense that Mrs. and Mr. Robinson wanted for her. Um, to choose Benjamin would be to reject all of that. So there's a great debate. There's even reiterated again this feeling for Elaine that she could choose Benjamin and kind of get a better voice for herself. Or she could turn it out like her mother. And that's why there's a scene where Mrs. Robinson was like, I'm not going to let you go. And, Mrs. and Elaine says, it's too late for you. I mean saying it's too late to you, Mrs. Robinson, but it's not too late for her, Elaine. And that's when Mrs. Robinson slaps her. So Benjamin's able to put a cross in the door. He traps all of these people together. And if you think back on this idea of plastics, you should be thinking about that this is a whole church of plastics who believe in the status quo, who are middle class, who all look the same, but who are probably not that happy as signified by Mr. and Mrs. Robinson's relationship. But the moment that Benjamin and Elaine escape the church and block them all in, they're rejecting the status quo. So it's a really, really big, big moment for them. And so then you get the return with elixir. And the return with elixir is the present or the gift um, that the hero gains. It's usually not like a literal gift or a present. It's usually figurative. 
in the form of knowledge, completion, and the big one, wholeness. Please, 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 if you only take one thing out of all three of these lectures on The Graduate, take this. Hero journey is always a quest for wholeness. A character starts the beginning fractured and complete. For Benjamin, he doesn't know what he wants, he's graduated, he doesn't know what his purpose is, and his internal lack, he's somewhat weak, he doesn't have any control, and he doesn't have any power. Um, he's really not, if I were going to put it again in gender terms, he's really not a man yet, he hasn't grown up. The graduate is Benjamin's quest for those things, to get a purpose in his life and to become a man. Ostensibly, the movie ends with he completes his quest. He's now whole. He knows what he wants, which is Elaine. And he gets her. And he stands up for himself. He rejects his parents. He rejects all those other things. And he gets his elixir. He gets a gift. He's now complete. But Mike Nichols puts a bit of a turn on all of this. In a film with a circular ending, that's, a, that's the happy ending. <laughs> the hero is quested, gotten his or her gift, and finishes complete, and everything's okay. Dorothy goes back to Oz. Uh, Luke vanquishes the rebellion. Harry finds a place and establishes himself as a wizard. If it's a happy ending, it's a circular ending, where the character kind of starts where they began, but they're now whole, they're complete. If it's open-ended, the character did not complete their hero quest. They failed their hero quest. If you think about someone like uh, Hamlet, Hamlet fails his hero quest. I mean, sorry, he succeeds his hero quest because he's actually able to kill his father. So even though it's a sad ending, it's still a circular ending. Um, but other films make it so that their hero fails and either dies or is punished um, or kind of is left uncertain of what to do next. So an open-ended film is one that ends with a hero that has not completed his quest. Let me think of a better one would be Macbeth. Macbeth tries to kill King Duncan. He used to be a good guy, but by the end, he's killed women and children. He's rebelled against his king, and he has to die for it. So he doesn't, he fails his quest becomes, because he becomes a dark and a tragic hero. Mike Nichols said in good conscience, he could not end this with them happily driving off into the future. So what I want you debate, to debate in the discussion board this week is whether or not you feel Benjamin succeeded in his quest. And students have debated both sides. There's really no right or wrong answer. It is open-ended in the sense that Mike Nichols didn't tell us. So figure out if he succeeded. If he succeeded, did he get what he was questing for? Or did he get misguided? Did he kind of mess up on what he was quested for? Or is it failed, kind of like what Mike Nichols seems to imply with the uncertain ending that uh, Benjamin got way late in his quest and started questing for the the wrong thing. So this is what you guys get to figure out in the discussion board, um, and it should be a pretty good debate. So I can't wait to see what you decide. <laughs>